Well, hello and welcome back to the channel. I am just saying my piece and I am thankful for all the many, many new subscribers that I've had and for all my loyal followers. I thank you all very much for all the new people who are coming, who are viewing the channel and the information and haven't subscribed. I would just ask you to just hit the subscription button, that little red button there that says subscribe. It really doesn't take anything off. I mean, it doesn't cost anything really. And and it will help out my channel also if you could just hit that like button that would also help the channel to grow and uh, you know say your piece that's what we're here for you see something you like make a comment tell me what you like about it and what you didn't like make suggestions as to what you would like to see done and ask questions about things that you don't understand or I haven't explained as clearly as I could have and I will do my best to ensure that everything is made as plain as possible because the idea here is to give you you a choice to give you the option to ensure that you understand that there are easier and cheaper and more modern ways of constructing a really nice house and it doesn't have to be expensive and you do not have to compromise either your quality or anything else the only thing that you'll do is save a lot of money now we are on number three of three on the topic of rebar and if you haven't seen all the others in the series I would advise you to go back and look at all of those because they are very helpful and they have brought us to where we are today so in this episode we are going to look at rebar as it pertains to roofing and because essentially in Jamaica when we do roofing we are talking primarily about um, slab roofing as opposed to other types of roofing and slab is primarily the kind of roofing that we use in Jamaica and we do that for a number of reasons we do it because it can be in many aspects quite cheaper than your traditional roofing it is easier and it requires less expertise to install and therefore we use it also it is far more secure than your traditional roofing it's not affected by hurricane and which is a, a big issue in the Caribbean in Jamaica it is also very earthquake resistant because your slab roofing provides a massive amount of structural rigidity to the entirety of your concrete building and as a result it makes your entire structure very earthquake resistant now your slab roof or your suspended slab as it is generally known can can be constructed using a variety of method depending on the dimension of the span the smaller the dimension of the roof will be the less reinforcement that it will need correspondingly the larger the dimension then the more reinforcement it will in fact need and the method of reinforcement will also change now another factor that affects the type of reinforcement and the way the reinforcement is used is the ratio of the width to the length of the suspended slab roof so with that understanding your slab roof is going to be described as either a one-way slab or a two-way slab now firstly let's talk about the one-way slab your one-way slab is described as a slab roof where you are supported on only two walls and those two walls are opposite and at the same time the ratio of your length to your width is more than twice in other words in the one-way slab if you have a width of 12 feet then for it to be a one-way slab the length needs to be more than 24 feet so essentially what a one-way slab is is two cantilevers that meet in the middle that's essentially a one-way slab now you have a two-way slab and a two-way slab is described as any slab roof any suspended roof where the ratio of the length to the width is two times or less in other words so for example if the length of your slab is going to be 12 and the width is going to be 16 then that ratio is less than 2 to 1 and therefore that is a two-way slab so for it to be also a two-way slab it needs to be supported on four sides in other words all four walls are involved in supporting that slab roof of course the vast majority of slab roofs that we are going to construct in Jamaica are pretty much always going to be two-way slabs now with that being said the narrower the span between the walls in terms of a one-way slab and a two-way slab is the less important those distinctions become for example let us say that you have a room that is 35 feet long but is only about nine feet wide then the importance of it being a one-way slab as opposed to being a two-way slab becomes completely unimportant it is irrelevant as you get wider as the span 
of the roof becomes wider. Those differences become quite important because then you are going to have to think about you now inserting reinforcements along specific points of that slab roof to ensure its rigidity and its structural integrity. So how much rebar do you use in your slab? Where do you put the rebar and how do you place it? In every slab you have two types of bars. You have your main bar and you have your distribution bar. Your main bar are the bars that go across the shorter length of the slab and your distribution bars are the bars that go across the longer length of the span. In addition you will hear the terms one-third span and quarter span. This concept is used to determine where additional reinforcement is needed in the slab so that the slab does not crack where it meets the wall. So quarter span is just the distance between two walls divided by four and of course one third span is just the distance from any inside wall divided by three. So the basic idea is that you are going to use a quarter span from any outside wall and you are going to use a one third span from any inside wall. Now a good rule of thumb when we are making our slab roof in Jamaica is to have a six inch by six inch grid pattern with your 5 8 rebar but the issue with that method is the reinforcement runs along the lower section of your concrete slab for the entirety of the slab and that is not the best way to do it that method works perfectly toward the center of the span but as you get toward the ends the outer sections of the span where the span encounters the wall and where the weight of the entire span has to be transferred into the columns and into the walls you are going to find that the concrete concrete where it meets the wall will begin to crack because there is a massive force that is being transferred into that area. What you need is for the reinforcement to be toward the top section of the slab so that it will resist these cracking forces. Now there are two methods that you can use to achieve this. The first one is to crank your rebar at the quarter span, run it along the lower section of your slab and then re-crank it again at the one third span to bring it back up into your anchor point in your wall. The second method is to lay your 5 8 rebar in your normal 12 inch grid pattern, then cut your 5 8 rebar again at your one third and your quarter span, and then lay those along the upper section of your slab. Now, this second method provides no advantage if your span is relatively small, as in the types of span that we are likely to encounter when we are building in Jamaica. So this is not the recommended method and it is also slightly more expensive. So if cost is an overriding concern, then you may want to stick to the cranked bar method. So having laid out your 5 8 rebar in a 12 inch grid pattern, you then go back over this, overlay this 12 inch grid pattern 5 8 rebar with a 3 8 rebar with a 12 inch grid pattern. You should should end up with an overall grid pattern of six by six. Now there's a completely different type of slab roofing, suspended slab that is known as beam and block. So essentially how this one works is that a number of beams precast and usually pre-stressed are laid across the shorter span of the roof. Then specially molded concrete blocks are then inserted one at a time in the space between the beams. Then mesh is usually placed on top of that. A steel mesh is then placed on top of that. The entire thing is then covered with cement about an inch thick. And this provides a well-proven method of constructing a suspended slab roof. Now, depending on how you acquire your beams, do you want to make the beams yourself or do you want to buy them where they are actually available for sale? And where you get your blocks, do you again want to make the blocks yourself or do you get them if they are available for sale? This method can be actually a lot cheaper or a lot more expensive in terms of material. But where you save in cost is is the fact that work that is normally done by 10 or 12 people can in fact be done by a single person if they are really really dedicated or quite comfortably by two persons and having acquired all your
your material and having them all in sight, the work will go just as fast or even faster. So it just happens to be that this is one of the times when I really won't make an actual recommendation as to which one might be cheaper or better for you. What I can say, however, is this. Look, if you have a lot of cheap labor and you have your all your materials on site and you're going to get your materials cheap you or say you're going to be doing this by yourself because you know you want to do it on a long term and a long term basis then the beam and block is definitely going to be much easier for you than the normal slab but it's it's all up to you you that you're gonna to have to just do your own calculations and decide which one is better and which one is easier for you now throughout this entire series i've been talking about rebar as reinforcement but the fact of the matter is there are other types of reinforcement that can go in concrete these are known as fiber reinforcement fiber reinforcement comes in many forms you have something called basalt you also have metal fiber reinforcement you also have fiberglass and there's also organic fiber reinforcement now let's talk about the organic fiber reinforcement first all that is is kaya you know it's that stuff that comes out of the coconut the one that people used to use to stuff mattress back in the day um, that sort of browns looking sort of thing i think they use them for mats or something like that these days that is kaya that can be used in your concrete to provide excellent reinforcement for the concrete and uh, in fact when you're making your bond blocks or you're making your blocks for your beam and block construction you can use that to help to reinforce the blocks or it's recommended that you reinforce the blocks with some kind of fiber whether or not that fiber is going to be basalt is going to be fiberglass or it's going to be steel fibers and steel fibers are just small tiny lengths of steel about the size of a needle but they are not as brittle as a needle they will bend and this is just mixed in some of them are a little longer than the needle probably about sometimes depending on the type that you're using they're going to be perhaps around two inches long two three inches long and generally speaking they are twisted or they have dents and so on on the outside that allows the concrete to stick onto them and you mix that into your concrete mixture and of course the fact that they are turned in all sort of random directions mean that they are holding the concrete mixture together when it dries so as long as the fibers are inside of the concrete when it hardens then in any direction that the concrete tries to twist tries to bend up down sideways you are going to have thousands of these small fibers that are going to be resisting that movement and that is an excellent way of ensuring that whatever blocks you are using are going to be extraordinarily strong i think we're going to leave it at that for now thanks for watching we i did promise that this was going to be about roofing in general and a rebar roofing in particular but uh, having gone through this and realized that the, the video is going to be just a little bit too long you know and people are busy they don't want to have to go through a video that is way too long so i am going to leave the roofing as a general topic for the next video so again thanks for watching thank you all for subscribing thank all the new people who have been watching thank everyone who has stayed with me so far and as usual we see you on the next one and don't forget to like subscribe and share the videos always drop a like it's always good to get feedback from people so again please don't forget to like subscribe and share these videos we want to get them out there so people understand that there are easier and cheaper ways of building their dream houses thank you very much and you all have a good day